I'm willing to blow up my marriage over nothing sort of joke here. <clears throat> Am I the asshole for telling my husband he can go on a trip with his sister on his own if he wants to cancel our trip to join theirs? Me and my husband have been married for a year. That's cute. Rick's niece, Anna, is terminal. Term that, that means terminally ill, right? Okay, yes. Well, then you're the asshole. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's no, I don't even need to read it, the, the rest of it. Like, obviously, like, if, if there's a 50-50 decision and the other person is literally going to die, you're in the wrong. If it's like 99-1 and they're dying, you can be in the right. But if it's 50-50, like, if it's even close, you got to go with them on that one. We're planning to go to France early next year. We've already decided on flights, hotel, et cetera. Nothing's been booked yet. We've already decided. We haven't made any, did, we haven't, uh, made any commitments or anything like that, but we've already got it all planned out and decided. No commitments that we're unable to break or anything like that. Nothing set in stone except in my brain. Nothing has been booked yet, though, because of what Rick wants, and this is causing issues between us. My sister-in-law... Anna's mom and her family are going to Fairbanks around that time because Anna wants to try to see the Northern Lights. Sister-in-law asked if we want to join them, and in Rick's words, we can go to France another time. I said no. I understand him, but we pretty much planned out our France trip. Rick is insisting that he needs to go. I got a little upset and replied he can go if he wants, but I won't be joining him and I'll go to France with my family instead. He's been sulking and is mad at me. I think he's the one being unreasonable here. Am I the asshole? Yes, obviously. There's like a 90% chance France will still be there in like 2026, okay? I hope this is a fake post. I don't even want to... It just makes me feel bad to like get into it, okay? Just this... Just, you could still have fun in Fairbanks, Alaska, probably. I wouldn't know personally, but <laughs> this is, you got to be at least a little bit reasonable in this one. This is crazy, man. Ketchikan, that's obviously, that's the jewel of the Northwest, but Fairbanks, I'm sure Fairbanks is fine anyway. I'm not, I'm not reading the comments on that one. Everyone knows what that one's going to say. Am I the asshole for not letting her boyfriend sleep over? Okay. All right. Let's see. This has got... It's, it's uh, intimacy, uh, your house, your rules, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's got everything. On mobile and throwaway because my daughter uses Reddit. Well, there's your first red flag. Are you sure that her boyfriend is real? <laughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry, that was beneath me. It was just a, it was just a witty little loan, okay? My 50, my, I'm 50. My daughter is in college and stays at her boyfriend's a lot, which me and my wife do not like very much, okay? Tough. We let her do what she wants nonetheless. She pays for her own tuition and works, plus pays for all of her own things, minus we pay for rent, we have a room for her, and she does live with us. Why are you, why are you writing like this? Where did you learn how to write sentences? You got the main idea at the back end of the sentence and all the mitigating circumstances at the front like a psycho? This shit is hard to read. It's driving me crazy. She asked if her boyfriend could come sleep over too so she could feel more comfortable staying at home more often. We said absolutely not. She was upset because she said it was her own room and that she's been dating him for almost three years. We just will not allow it under our roof and she threatened to move in with him. We really want her to continue living here but do not want them sleeping together under our roof. We do not like it with her there either but she's an adult. We have a pretty good relationship so this has been hard for us. Am I the asshole? Yeah, you're crazy. What's the... I, I don't understand. Listen. Here's what I'm going to say. 
I can understand at the very least having negative feelings about the fact that the child that you raised is now old enough to have sleepovers with her boyfriend, okay? The problem you have is thinking that the way that you deal with the negative emotion in that case is to do something about the stimulus that led you to feeling the negative emotions instead of looking within yourself at what's causing those negative emotions and learning how to deal with it. You're a 50-year-old man. When a situation comes like this, comes up like this and you're like, I feel bad, I need to do something about the thing in the real world that's making me feel bad, you gotta, you gotta progress past that. Sometimes, yes, I feel hungry, I'll eat some food. I feel sleepy, I'm gonna take a snooze. But if you're like, someone is doing something that's well within their own rights, um, and they're my child, so even though sometimes I have to like, uh, you know, support them even though it wouldn't be something that I would do for myself, that's when you gotta look within yourself and be like, well, oh, my daughter's pissing me off so much with her behavior. Why is her completely normal behavior pissing me off so much? You just gotta suck it up, you gotta Ben Stiller it, I'm sorry. Why is this man talking and not reading the edits? Because I'm making a good point. Everybody else is just like, read the edits, read the edits, ah, la, 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 read the edits, ah, ha, 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 read the edits, he's crazy, la, 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 la. I'm trying to have the slightest shred, shred of sympathy for this man at the very least. Dude, dude, skip the third act. Get to the part where Gulp Shitto shows up in the mid credit scene. <clears throat> Dude, I don't care. Okay, like, dude, he kills the bad guy who's, like, just like himself but in a different colored suit. Dude, he, okay, whatever. Get to the part where Adam Warlock pops out of the cryo chamber so I can go on r slash uh, Marvel Studios and be like, what does this mean? Bro, my dream cast for Adam Warlock. Oh, uh, call me crazy. I'm going to say it's Adam Driver. Anyway, I'm just saying... I mean, this is, there's like a lesson in this for me. I'm not a perfect human being, but sometimes when you feel negative emotions, it's because something is fucked up and you got to fix it. But sometimes the thing that's fucked up is the way you're looking at the situation. Like if your kid is in their 20s and they're an adult and they're doing adult things and you feel bad, the secret is not to put them under lock and key. The secret is to be like, I don't know, take up golf or something. Like you're in your 50s. You got to find something to take your mind off it because they're doing, they, that's what adults do. Anyway, so am I the asshole? My wife and I discussed it a bit, and we're currently thinking we could put an air mattress next to her bed if they leave the door a bit cracked. I understand we're the assholes. It's just hard changing our beliefs. We love her, and she has been really disconnecting from us and not coming around at all. Well, that's like, you know, I mean, that's just what happens when it, so they become an adult. You know, I don't know if everybody's on the same page here, but definitely, like, my relationship with my parents... You know, they're like you're the, you spend like 90 percent of your time with them when you're like a child. And then as a teenager, you start to spend like like less and less, but still a lot. And then I went to college and I was like it cratered. I saw them, you know, now and then, <clears throat> but at the same time, early 20s, still like very low. I was like, you know, defining myself as an adult. And then in my, you know, mid 20s, when I when I was like, I'm an adult now, We've started spending more time together, and then, you know, it's going to continue to rise up to some point. The early 20s, <coughs> pardon me, it's, uh, you know, they're, they're making their own, their way in the world. I don't, under I don't understand the problem. I also think it's, how naive are you? to think that an air mattress and a cracked door is gonna resolve what's, like why don't you just say it? You don't want your daughter having sex with her boyfriend even though they're both adults. You don't want it to happen to begin with, which I think is, by the way, not an atypical thing to not want, but you also have to acknowledge at some point that you're like, okay, at this point I'm the asshole about it. You can still have the asshole feeling, but you could be like, it's, that's a good way to describe it. It's crazy, but it is a little understandable. But like, come on, you're not gonna, the air mattress and the cracked door is not gonna stop you. Like, what, what do you think is that's gonna accomplish? You're just, 
by trying to keep your daughter close, you're pushing her away. I hate to put it in the Hallmark lifetime movie sort of way, but it's, it, it's the core of the issue the way I see it, at least. Edit. Our son already moved out into an apartment with his girlfriend. He does not come around often. Edit. My daughter texted. She found the post. I will do an update once we talk. Edit. We spoke. She says she's going to stay with her boyfriend more and will try to move out at the end of the semester. We said he could sleep on the floor or couch, but not her bed. She said she understood and left. We are not on bad terms. She explained her point of view, but we are not willing to compromise that far. Thank you all for the words of advice. This is like... I think this is fake. Maybe they're all fake, but like... I feel like this is... I, I just don't see a 50-year-old man writing this post and then coming back and saying, edit, my daughter texted, she found the post, I will do an update once we talk. I don't see someone writing this line. Like, I don't, I don't see the person who they claim to be writing this line. I do see someone in Overwatch queue writing this line and then playing three ranked games and then coming back and writing the last part of the edit. That's, that's my conspiracy theory here. But, like, this is, I, this is the kind of post that pisses me off a little bit. Because, like, it's, why are we... Obviously, if this is real, you're the asshole. You don't have a leg to stand on. There's not even any point to... To the discussion. There's no gray area. This reeks of boomer. That's why you have to be skeptical of things that confirm the biases that you hold. If you're saying something like, no, I could totally see someone doing this. You've got to look within yourself and figure out why it is that you're not applying the same level of scrutiny to this post because of your ageism that you apply to every other post on the website and the animals are leaving and the... <clears throat> anyway. We'll find another one. We find a fake one that looks real, please. Am I the asshole for threatening to leave my daughter's wedding because of her rules? Am I the asshole for threatening to leave my daughter's wedding because of her rules? Similar to this post. R slash conservative. Usual suspects cry foul as GOP makes squad the focus of dot, dot, dot. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Reddit. I appreciate the... Based on your browsing history... Minnesota! <clears throat> My... 48 male daughter's 26F wedding was yesterday. She moved back to our home state of Utah with her fiance after living in Boston for college and dental school. She does not seem happy to be back here and she only moved back because her husband's company transferred him here, okay? She knows that in our family, families run large. Honestly, seems like a great place to open a dental practice. I think... You're not the asshole. She's not seeing the big picture here. High earning families with an average of eight kids per household. That is a, that is a beautiful place to open a dental office that shares a location with the Chuck E. Cheese. I'm just, I'm looking at it from a business case here, okay? <clears throat> when she started planning her wedding, wait, okay, sorry. May, she is one of three kids only because my wife became sick after our youngest, but it is not uncommon to have families of eight. When she started planning her wedding, she started worrying about venue capacity and having to spend money on babysitters. For couples with small kids on her list, she made it clear she could not, she could not accommodate kids four and under at this wedding. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Most of these posts that say, like, you can't bring young kids to the wedding, I'm like, that's unreasonable and selfish. There might be an asterisk that says except in cases of Utah. I didn't consider the edge case. If everybody in your family also has like six kids of their own on average, then I could understand being like, we got to do something. 
if you got like two kids and your sister's like they can't come to the wedding, that's like too far. But if you're like, if your cousin is like, hey, do you, we need a whole table just for me, my kids and my husband. Then I'm like, you know what? I could understand writing like a no kids clause into your, into your wedding. <laughs> That seems like a lot. Also, like, and this sound, I, I don't live in Utah, okay? But when you have six kids and your mom had six kids or, and, and your, your grandparents had six kids, don't you have like 27 aunts or something like that? Doesn't just like one aunt look after 40 kids for that day? They all get like one hard boiled egg for lunch and, and a slice of bread. And then like, I, it, it takes a village to raise a child. But in this case, doesn't it just take one adult to handle the village while the wedding's going? I thought you had like a support system. My parents live a five hour flight away. We're, we're handling all this shit ourselves. I feel like if I, if I had like eight aunts, I would be like, uh, <clears throat> pardon me. I'm feeling a little under the weather today. Aunt Sally, could you come over and watch the baby for a bit? Oh, Aunt, uh, oh, sorry, Aunt Sally's busy. Uh, Aunt, uh, Aunt Judy, could you come over and watch the baby for a bit? Hey, could we, uh, oh, uh, Aunt uh, Jennifer, could I come, could I drop the baby over there? I'm not feeling well today. <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Like, isn't, isn't that what they're there for? I thought that was like the great thing about having a big family. Is that there's like something... There's like a virus in the human brain where when you're like, I can't deal with this kid for like another five minutes, their aunt, grandma, et cetera, et cetera, is like, I want nothing more in my life than to look at this child and smother them with affection right now. So true, so true. They're like, I was made for this. Anyway, still, still going. Um, kids under four can't come to the wedding. Okay, fair enough. This caused a lot of ire and we got phone calls asking why. My daughter's rationale was she thought older kids would enjoy a party more. My daughter's younger sister, Ashley, has been married for two years and begged her sister to... My daughter's younger sister, Ashley, who is also your daughter has been married for two years and begged her sister to invite her husband's brother and his wife to the wedding too. Ashley's brother-in-law and his wife have five kids, four of which always lie and one of which always tells the truth. Four of whom are under the age of four. It's your life. When they RSVP'd, they indicated they'd only be bringing their eight-year-old daughter. I know Ashley's husband's brother well as he funded my brother's new business and employs Ashley's husband, my son-in-law, in a job that allows Ashley and him to be full-time parents to their kids. What the fuck is happening here? Your brother-in-law is also his brother's boss and also was the investor in your... This is like Fargo, man. It's too much. It's all wrapped up and it's, it's, it's melting down. However, that side of the family took a while to warm up to Ashley as they are wary to newcomers. So the day of the wedding comes and everybody arrives with the kids they RSVP'd for and then Ashley's brother-in-law arrives early with all five of their kids. The nanny they have for their kids is not there. My daughter is angry when she hears of this. The explanation is that their younger kids were upset and they wanted to be in the wedding photos too. An argument ensues where my daughter says they had on-call nannies and just for whatever reason decided this was the event they didn't want to leave their kids for. On-call nannies? You could do that? You get Uber and nanny? On-call nannies. Some on-call laurels, maybe. I look over. Ashley is getting upset. Ashley's getting upset! 
brother-in-law and sister-in-law won't budge. The toddlers are getting anxious and starting to loudly cry. I finally tell my daughter just to let them in or we'd be here forever. She asked why I was taking their side. I finally say that she either lifts this child-free policy for family or just canceled the wedding because I'm done with her rules and leaving. My daughter says, really, Dad? Way to take sides. She then stormed off, and there was a minute where she considered walking down the aisle with her future father-in-law. She ended up relenting but says her wedding is marred by this event. Am I the asshole? I was afraid this would become the standoff and Ashley would face ire from her in-laws. Got a couple of different things here, okay? First one is, you're the asshole because your life is too complicated. And I'm sure that you're probably doing some self-reflection on that right now. Your life is too complicated. You're, you, you got too many kids and cousins and sisters and brothers and all of their... They're not just relatives. They're, they're all wrapped up in your personal businesses and, and affairs and stuff like that. You have too much coupling and not enough cohesion, okay? You need to... You need to refactor your life a little bit. Why is our conservative similar to this post? Probably because AI is bad and they say the word Utah in the OP. I think that's the main reason that this is drawing the, the, the two halves together here. That's my reverse engineering. I don't really, like, you can have eight kids if you want to have eight kids. Like, that doesn't really bother me. It's not a life I would choose for myself. But if you're like, am I the asshole because my family life's really complicated? I'm like, what'd you expect? I have seven brothers and sisters. Every single one of them has six kids as well. Am I the asshole for, like, not keeping their names straight? I'm like, well, you better get a fucking dossier dude this is a life you chose for yourself I don't even know how to like, like it, it, it is just like a Robert Altman film there's too many characters man I don't know how to tease this apart what I do know is you if this story is real you should not have taken anybody but your daughter's side on the day of her wedding for having what appears to be a fairly reasonable clause that was violated. If you're going to violate a clause, you got to give advance notice. You can't just spring it on them and then ask for permission. That, that's the asshole move. So like the, the core of the issue is, yes, you're the asshole because you got like, I don't know, you're, you're a people pleaser and it's even though it's your daughter's special day and she made a reasonable request, you're like, why can't we all just get along anyway? But like, it's more like, man eight kids <clears throat> I know the dad only has three he only has more than average four kids under four like I just want to say like rip to you my brother that's crazy also like rip to your wife for sure I mean, like, that is, I'm sure there's people in that situation in this chat, which is, again, is fine, is your life, but man, four in four years, it takes, like, 0.8 years just to make one, and you did four in four years? They were all singles too. There were there wasn't any any two piece combos in there. Twins, Basil. Wrong. Nine out of twelve is point seven five. Hey, guess what? World's uh, smartest redditor. The average uh, gestation period is actually forty weeks. <laughs> Can I get a 40 divided by 52 check real quick? It's actually going to end up being like 0.78. Please don't be 0.77. That means they're right. Please, please. 0 0.78, 0 0.769, son of a bitch. 
<clears throat> All right, you, you win this one. You win this. I'm not reading the rest of this. It's just annoying. I'm mad at you for having such a large family. And that's not fair. I need to examine within myself why that makes me so mad. It's not jealousy. And it's not sympathy. I don't know. It's a different emotion. I'm still trying to figure it out. It is fair they're destroying the earth. Not really, though, like, listen, if you're going to be mad at someone with eight kids for taking up too many resources, don't take hour-long showers just because you like the way the water feels, okay? Don't close your eyes and sit down in the shower. I'm not going to judge anybody on an environmental level for having children, okay? I don't know, maybe, maybe they live off of the land. Maybe their carbon footprint is lower than mine. When you got eight kids, you're not taking too many, like, trans-Pacific flights, this shit would be like $100,000. Mostly just sitting at home. You're driving. You're, when you have eight kids, you're, you carpool every day. If they have an electric vehicle, they probably have like a smaller footprint than I do. Okay? I'm just annoyed that like... I don't know. I'm annoyed, I guess, that the, that the dad strikes me as naive. And he's like, hey, my family's huge and it's causing problems. And I'm like, yeah, obviously... The more people you add into an ecosystem, the more likely there's going to be some conflict. If you didn't want to fight so much, you shouldn't have, you should have thought of that before you had like fucking 12 kids. But that's my own that's my own cross to bear, okay? That's my own cross to bear. If they drive um, a GMC Suburban, then yes, you're the asshole. But not as much of an asshole as somebody who drives a GMC Suburban, but is like just them and their spouse. And then they're like, where do I park? Yeah, yeah, you, you fucking park anywhere as long as you don't own a GMC Suburban that's like uh, fucking 45 feet long for no reason. You got to go park in one of those like side parking spots that they reserve for school buses. Sorry, sorry. <clears throat> So you go, um, he's car pilled. He's car pilled. Am I the asshole for making my wife walk to her two hundred foot to her? Have you ever had a dream that you that you wanted you to do you so bad you could do anything? Am I the asshole for making my wife walk to her two hundred foot to her parking spot? Look at these edits, man. We live in a townhouse with one garage parking spot. I park my EV in the garage so I can charge it overnight and keep it out of the elements. There are guest parking spots right next to the garage, but when those are unavailable, I request that my wife parks her car, a beat-up 2006 Prius, on the street, which is 200 feet from the garage down an asphalt driveway. She leaves for work at 6 a.m. while I don't work until 8 a.m. Am I the asshole for not letting her park in the garage? Yes. I'm I'm also I'm trying to figure out the I'm trying to figure out the the kinematics of the situation. You have a townhouse that's separated from the street by a 200 foot driveway. Like what's the what's the driveway doing? You know what I mean? Like, why is, why is the driveway there? It's just chilling? But I mean, like, what's it do? Wait, wait, 200 foot long driveway. Look, it's not insanely long, but I would expect that that means that there's like a palatial estate on the other end. Maybe there's like a huge fountain in the lawn or something like that. Edit 7 explains this. Oh, th thank you, thank you. The driveway is shared amongst my neighbors and no one is allowed to park there? No, this doesn't, that doesn't explain it. I'm trying to picture in my house, or in my head, how this works. So I'm, I've put a townhouse. So there's like, I don't know, there's a complex, maybe there's like eight little townhouses closely in the same area. Then there's a 200-foot driveway that goes from the garage near the townhouses. 200 feet? A 70-meter-long driveway? 
Hey, Green ERV, thanks for the gifted subscriptions, by the way. I'll, no, okay, now you got me thinking about, about East Vancouver, okay? You're driving, you turn right, there's an alley that could be 200 feet long, if you lived on one end of it, I guess, and you parked on the other. And then there's garages that line the side of the alley that are in the vicinity of the townhouses. Okay, I can picture that at least. I'm solely financial resp financially responsible for both cars. I, this is the last, this is how you know you've lost the argument, no disrespect. I know how that sounds, but as soon as you're like, I'm, my bad behavior might be justified by the fact that I paid for this, like that is how you, you, do, you don't have a leg to stand on, especially when that's edit number one. Hey, Corpse Slime, thank you for the gifted subscriptions as well. Thank you. Thank you. My wife has broken the side mirror and scraped the Prius backing out of the garage on two separate occasions. Okay. Number one, don't care. Number two, like, no offense, accidents happen. She's driving a car from 2006. I'm not going to say she's been driving it for like 16 years, but like at the same time, this is like, this is not unreasonable. Bay Area, so lows are still in the low 50s. Safe neighborhood with well-lit streets and sidewalks. She agreed to the parking arrangement before the car was ordered. I'm not trying to flex nor being a Tesla bro. I figured you all wanted more specificity. The driveway is shared amongst my neighbors and no one is allowed to park there. Yeah, you don't park on a driveway. A shared driveway, at least. You don't. I was like, Devin, you heard the Jerry Seinfeld joke? What's next? We're going to drive on a parkway? I've driven the Prius for 11 years before passing it on to my wife who drove an even crappier 90s car. She's sentimentally attached to the Prius and won't trade it in until it kicks the can. What the fuck is the problem with the... Nobody's mad she's driving a Prius. What's the problem? I don't understand the issue. Nobody's saying buy your wife a car that doesn't have to be parked. I mean, what do you... I refer to the Prius as beat up because it has dents, chipping paint on the roof and hood and paint transfer from previous run-ins. I walk her out to her car when the distance is not within view of our bedroom. Her commute is 10 minutes inner streets versus my 40-minute highway commute. This shit is like irrelevant. I don't understand like the... <laughs> I don't understand like the problem... I believe this is a real post, though, just due to, like, the insane way that it's written. I actually, listen, I don't think he's, like, that much of an asshole. It's just, like, a weird thing to go to the internet to try to fix. Or to try to get their verdict on. Like, I understand, listen, the EV has to be charged. With an 80-minute commute, there, surely it doesn't have to be charged every day, Right? There's no way that it's not like a cell phone from 1993. Isn't that like an every other day sort of thing? Every three days or something like that? It just can't be. No, it can't be right. It doesn't pass the, 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 the smell test. So you're telling me if he had like a 90 minute commute, he would not be able to, he would have to swap batteries halfway through. It doesn't make sense. People are going on like road trips. I get they have to charge like through the road trip. But at the same time, like it doesn't, it, it just doesn't seem right to me. You don't want to run it down to zero? Yeah, but you don't have to keep it at like, you know, a hundred. Well, these things have ranges of like, you know, like 400 kilometers or something like that. Depends. Okay, well, the, just give me a yes or no. <laughs> That's too complicated for me. Either way, like, it doesn't matter that much. I guess, here's the thing. I think he's kind of the asshole for the way that he phrased it, saying he's making his wife walk 200 feet. He's not really making his wife walk 200 feet. It's like the circumstances making the, making the wife walk 200 feet. 
I think she should maybe like chill out about it. I just don't, his desire to breathlessly defend himself and be like, uh, I, I'm not doing anything wrong is weird to me. Like, isn't this a situation where maybe like your wife is like, I wish I didn't have to walk so far to get to my car. And rather than present her with 11 bullet points of why it's not your fault, you just say, yeah, I know it, it does suck. Sorry. Like you just show like some sympathy instead. Like, it is what it is. I also, I mean, I, I do think that, like, you know, why can't he drive the Prius some days and her drive the, what we have to assume here is a Tesla some days. And, they, I mean, they could alternate. If you're 100% if you're concerned about, like, fairness, then you could alternate. But it seems like the only way that he's concerned about fairness is because he wrote the contract up and she signed it before they bought the car. And nothing is more fair than tort law. Because she's attached to the car? It's fair then. Well, honestly, like, I hate to say it because I don't like the... I don't like this guy from his post. But, like, at the same time, sounds like she should just kind of suck it up then. If she's sentimentally attached to the Prius and then his Tesla needs to be charged every night in order to make it, which I don't buy for the record, but if we're assuming that that's real and it has to be charged every night uh, in order to actually allow him to get to and from work the next day, then, like, welcome to life. Sometimes you want to eat, like, you know, chicken fingers and fries for dinner every night, but you're like, I should have some green leafy vegetables so I don't die in my 40s. Like, you just, they sometimes you got to, circumstances dictate you got to do some stuff that you don't necessarily want to do. Everybody sucks here. What in the American is this? First of all, it seems like your car is more important to you than your wife, which makes you the asshole, but I can't understand how anyone would bother to complain about walking 200 feet. The entire thing being such an issue you feel the need to post it on the internet is astounding to me. I agree. One of the finest legal minds I've ever known. You're the asshole for being an annoying Tesla bro. First thing I thought of, too, instead of using my vehicle, he says, it's my Tesla Model Y. Did he edit that out of the post originally? I was on his side until I, I, maybe there was a stealth edit there. If I wasn't 100% sure from the post, your defensiveness in the comments and inability to take criticism makes me think you're the asshole. If you want to brag about owning a Tesla, try a car-related subreddit instead of inventing a story to post on Am I the Asshole. It's, it's a Model Y. Is he bragging? That's the, that's the lesser priced of the two SUV SKUs. Yeah, if he had a Roadster from like 2011 or whatever, I would be like, that's rare. I'm driving past Tesla Model Ys like uh, 15, 20 times a day just on the way to daycare. You live in Vancouver, though? Yeah, I know. So what? <laughs> I'm not saying it's a cheap car. I'm just saying, like, is he really out here trying to brag about owning the less expensive Tesla SUV? When he lives in the Bay Area, you pieces of crap! You princes of Maine, you kings of New England, he's the one who, they, don't give me this, you don't understand life, you live in Vancouver, this guy lives in the damn Bay Area. It's where this shit was like invented. You're the asshole. I assume since your wife goes to work at 6 a.m., she's the first one home as well. So you expect her to ignore the empty garage and park on the street so you can park your precious Tesla out of the elements? It would be one thing if you needed it to charge, but it shouldn't be an every night thing. You just expecting that you automatically get the garage because you drive a Tesla makes you the asshole. Okay? This fair enough. 
California, the elements, you're the asshole, get a rain cover. <laughs> oh, man. This is good. This is too far, though. You're the asshole. Bragging about your car all the while talking crap about your wife's car. Start saving for the divorce now because you're going to need it. Listen, you don't know. She could be as fucked up as he is. People are all, they always read these one-sided posts and they go, I can't wait for your wife to divorce you. She married him in the first place, shithead. She might be crazy too. She might be worse for all we know. Why don't you just assume that the world's worst man married like an angel? She might be fucked up. You don't know that. If her concern is being attacked at 6 a.m., any good husband would get his ass out of the bed and walk her to her car. Is that what she's scared of? This is a tough one for me. I'm not saying I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't be thrilled about it, though. But I would also probably, I don't know, I feel like I would just be like, why don't you just take the other car today and I'll drive the Prius. This is also, um, I, maybe this is like hater tech. Maybe I, well, I don't know. We're, we were victims of crimes not just a week ago, not but a week ago. Our barbecue cover got stolen right off our patio. We got that son of a bitch on the damn security camera. VPD is like, please stop calling us. We have more serious problems. But I'm like, is it 6 a.m. doesn't strike me as like prime getting jumped territory. 5 a.m., yeah, man, 100%. If you're still up at 5 a.m., that's like you're in the ESPN red zone. But 6 a.m., that's when the normies start to like reclaim the earth. Like, say from around, like, 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. is when, like, that's when I would be like, I need a OnStar or something like that. At, at 6 a.m., you're seeing people, like, walk out of their house in bathrobes and pick up the newspaper from their front step. So true. At 6 a.m., the normies assemble. da 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 -da. Five fifty nine. Ah, six. We good. Listen, I don't claim to know how the mind of a violent criminal works. I just know what I observe, or what I think that I observe in my imagination, at least. I think I'm done with React Court, mostly just because I got to go to the bathroom, though. Okay, that was React Court slash Marker React Court.